to do high TDL osteotomy or distal femoral or combined, how, how to do pre-op planning and the importance of planning, planning and some notes about the technique. So start with which side is more deformed in this patient. You think that the right side is more deformed, but I believe it's the left, and I'll tell you why. Uh, now indications, deformity correction, knee osteoarthrosis, instability, sometimes in combined situations, like deformity and instability, uh, instability and osteoarthrosis, osteoarthrosis and deformity, and so on, and there are other indications we'll talk about later. So first, deformity correction. Where to do high tibia or distal femoral, and this is really the importance of planning. And there was all belief that uh, when it's valgus, you have to do high tibia, and it's valgus, you have to do distal femoral. This is wrong, and always you have to do pre-op plan. And this is why you are here to know the basics how to uh, plan the form correction. Now, to start with this simple, very simple valgus deformity in a young lady. Okay, so how to plan correction? This is the usual case where the deformity is distal femoral. So start with planning. You have to do proper long film x-ray from hip to ankle joint in standing in neutral position where the patella is facing forward. And here to start with planning, you have to take the measurement and I depend when there is no obvious bony deformity, I depend on the mechanical angles and mechanical measures. And you see in this case, that the uh, mechanical LDFA is uh, 79 around the both sides. So it's clear that the deformity is distal femoral. So we plan to correct this deformity and this medium closing weight osteotomy. So we do this, and here we need 12 millimeter pace of weight to take it off, and then uh, we may make some hip abduction to do planning for the other side. And again, we need about 12.7 millimeter seats, 12.7, not 13 millimeter. And then after that was like that, and we correct. And here in trial, we do the operation. I do bi-planar osteotomy, and I'll show you uh, in the workshop why to do uh, a bi-planar and how to do this technique. And you see how the joint lines look leak here, and how it's now. So this is before, this is after. Let's take this case. This is a more complex case where the bulbous deformity is associated with flexion contracture. So this is not a simple case. So to plan this, it will allow you to planning first, uh, or staged planning first for the femur, and then after that, do the operation, and then after that, repeat the long film and do another plan to correct if there is residual TBL um, uh, deformity. And here, post-op, and we did arthrobiosis, so he satisfied no further operation. This is another case which show you the importance of planning. This is valgus. Is it femoral or tibia? It's tibia. <coughs> but if you do long film, you see that uh, though it's valgus, but the joint line is valgus. So if you correct uh, from the uh, tibial side, you will may have straight uh, leg, but oblique joint line, which, is, which means uh, high shearing forces. So you don't think first, when you see the patient that you have to do more valgus deformity by closing with the femur uh, on lateral side and then correct from tibial side. This is another case of valgus. And this case we have both femoral and tibia and we use double osteotomy, distal femoral and proximal tibia. Now, this is a virus and he's a young male patient. Virus on the left side, he has mild thrusts. And this situation, we need this type of femoral osteotomy, and that's not actually all. So we do plan, always, always plan and on proper film. And this is the measurement, and you see here that the mechanical LDFA is 100. So it's a femoral deformity, while on the other side it is 89 normal. So we plan the correction, and this is our plan. This is uh, some tips in the operation. We start with the distal cut. Then measure the distance here. This distance according to our plan, maybe I, I think it was 12, and then put the other one. So you make the other cut, you take the hinge. And that's just the situation. When you have thick hinge, you can further decrease the hinge by osteotron. And then after that, you close the wedge. I, I use pipe planer, so I fix it temporarily with KOL. And this is the alignment according to our plan. 
just medial uh, to the center uh, in relation to the normal one. And here we start orthotomix to start with fixation by wire temporarily and then put the blade. This is before, this is our plan, and this is after. And this is again by planar osteotomy, this is before and this is after. So what happened if you don't do this proper pre op planning? I think you will cause hidden deformity. And I'll show you this case. This patient is young male patient, want to study, and now he's a medical student in Nigeria. He presented to me after multiple failed surgery in India. And here you see the left side looks straight and the right side in virus. He has multiple operations complicated by infection, the reserve, and so on. Now he's satisfied with the left side but has this virus on the right. I'll show you here the scars of previous surgery. And look now when he's walking, how significant is the thrust on the right side. So I think we have combined deformity here. One of it is joint laxity. So let's make the long film here a situation of deformity and instability. Here the long film and you should see how the mechanical axis deviation and the major <coughs> measurement was uh, the mechanical LDFE was 102 degrees while the left side you see how oblique the joint line is 100 okay and there is uh, the joint convergence and it was about more than 6 degrees so we have combined joint and distal femoral deformity we do the plan and then after that we do the operation I do always uh, arthroscopy before doing osteotomy and this may affect my decision in uh, operation where to shift the mechanical axis and I'll talk about that when uh, dealing with uh, uh, osteoarthritic cases. So this is after the operation again bipolar osteotomy this is before this is after. Now uh, what to do with the left side? It is deformed. The joint line is bleak, it's 100 degree but the alignment looks good but it's really in a mild virus so what to do? If we want to correct you see that the proximal tibia angle, mechanical angle, is around 95. So to correct, we have to do double osteotomy here, closing wedge, and closing wedge medial in the tibia. Now, and if we say no, we don't want to more interfere with the proximal tibia because he has multiple operation, infection, and so on, so on. So we have to do what? Just try to correct the alignment by the distal femoral osteotomy and you see here still the joint line is oblique it's about 94.5 degree so what to do I decided to do nothing because the patient was satisfied but I know that the joint line is oblique high shearing forces in this end with osteoarthrosis I discussed that with the patient and I decided to do nothing he is now a third year medical student now other indication is knee osteoarthrosis. This is a major development and expanded indication of osteotomy. You see this is a young male patient presented to me three years ago. He was at that time 37 years old. He has already left total knee on the left side and present complaining with virus, thrust on walking and pain. And I decided to do osteotomy. Though it was severe or advanced osteoarthrosis, uh, not the ideal indication but he's so young for total knee. Now, osteotomy is indicated in younger age group, heavy workers and those involved in sports activity, those with mild to moderate, this is the ideal one, mild to moderate osteoarthrosis when it's more compartmental in association with the presence of deformity. So what's the relation of deformity and osteoarthrosis? There is uh, evidence in the literature that each four degrees of deformity uh, increase the risk three times, the risk of osteoarthrosis. And when there is osteoarthrosis, each four degree of deformity can lead to pr more faster progression of osteoarthrosis 10 to 20 times. So this is a biomechanical study showing how osteotomy works in knee osteoarthrosis. This is done in Hanover by Professor Lopenhofer and Jens Agnes Kirchner. And uh, it was done on six cadavers and showed that when the mechanical axis uh, passing from zero point, the, me the most medial uh, edge of the joint, uh, the load was about 65 to up to 85 percent to the medial side. And when you shift this to what's called Fajisawa point, 62 percent, the load would be the other way around. So it, most of the load would be 65 on the lateral side. 
So by doing osteotomy and shifting the mechanical axis, you are doing unloading of the disease compartment. You reduce pain, improve function, slow progression of osteoarthrosis, and most important in young patient, you delay the need for total knee replacement. So start with always knee arthroscopy. This is one of my patients, he's 48 years old, and I decided to do double osteotomy, and when doing arthroscopy, there was a large chondral lesion on the lateral side, so the plan was changed. So arthroscopy is important to make sure that the lateral compartment which would be loaded after the operation is normal and at the same time you can treat associated lesions like meniscal tear, chondral flap, loose body or doing microfracture sometimes and so on. So what to do for this young male patient, 48 years old, he's complaining of pain, a mild to moderate osteoarthrosis, failed of conservative treatment. What to do? I think the best answer is uh, high tibial osteotomy, and now here the patient third day post-op. I did plan, it's a virus alignment. We do this pre-op plan to shift the mechanical axis, and this is the operation using Tomofix. And by this technique, we use the patient is able to uh, uh, bend the knee and full weight bearing as early the second day. So, uh, high tibial osteotomy, which technique to do closing bridge or open bridge? If you do closing bridge, so it's a more invas invasive procedure. It involves muscle detachment, fibula osteotomy. It's difficult to have the exact degree of correction. There is no chance for fine tuning the operation in trouble. There is relative shortening, and more important, you may have loss of correction a few millimeter if you do correction more than eight degrees. Beside that, one of the problem that if you do closing bridge, you may have a lateral translation with the shaft and the step. And this, if you have such situation when you need to do total knee in future, you have to medialize the tibial component, this is a very bad idea. The other problem is the peroneal nerve, and there are varieties of uh, 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 incidents of peroneal nerve in the literature, injury in the literature after this technique, and it was from 2% to 27% by EMG study. So to avoid all that, you can do open with high tibial osteotomy, where you don't need to do fibula osteotomy, no muscle detachment, no risk of peroneal nerve, no leg shortening, and you can do fine tuning intraop. You can decide and change your plan intraoperatively. But this technique is not safe. You may have implant failure, you loss of correction, so the arthrosis, uh, slow changes, and you may need bone graft and larger correction. So what's, what to do? For that reason, we have now improvement of open wedge technique. This improvement involving biplanar osteotomy, and we will show you in the workshop how to do that, and later in my presentation why this biplanar. So this gives stability and enhanced healing. You have a gradual opening of the hinge. We call it talk to bone. Just when you open the hinge, just talk to bone and or speak to bone and make it slowly that you preserve the lateral hinge, and if you preserve that, it gives you stability to allow, you, to allow the patient for uh, uh, early full weight period. Now, control of slope, the problem with the previous technique that you have increase of slope, it's not now by using a plate fixator it's, uh, and uh, giving more attention to the technique, it's not more a problem. Also, the synthesis, this is a major development of the technique using a plate fixator like Tomofix, and this is specially designed for this purpose. All these make the uh, high tibial osteotomy safe procedure with good results and this development expanded the indication of high tibial osteotomy, not only to correct deformity, but also to treat osteoarthrosis in cases of osteoarthrosis and stability, and in cases of combined uh, instability and osteoarthrosis and other indications. So, knee instability. Let's take this case, this is a basketball player. She has uh, uh, progressive pain at the posterior corner, and he, she has hyperextension virus and thrust, and by their test, it was grade two. So it's, she is not the ideal patient for posterior reconstruction because of fear of failure. So I decided to do osteotomy. This is the plan, and this is post-op. You see how the patient five months after the operation, no thrust and stable, and now uh, she went back to playing uh, basketball. This is other indication in the presence of instability. And here a patient who has nearly good alignment, but he has pain on the medial side, 
He has previous postulator of the code of reconstruction and uh, ACL. He has pain and feeling of instability in walking, lateral instability. So the best for such situation to shift the mechanical axis to the lateral side. Here you see the angle is normal, mild virus, and by shifting this, you will cause no, no more tension on the lateral side and you offload the medial side. This is a very good indication for osteotomy. So another case, this is a football player. He has a pain, a previous ACL injury, and a silent to do because of presence of osteal forces, bipolar osteotomy in form of a bulbous and extension. And you see here that the limb is more on the left side, so I decrease the slope, which will uh, decrease the anterior translation of tibia, and this is documented in the literature that 10 degree slope difference, if you decrease the slope, you will uh, produce 6.8 millimeter uh, change in uh, anterior tibial translation. So, here another case, but it's not my case, this is a patient presented to Professor Robin Hofer. Uh, she has failed the three ACR reconstruction. And by doing that, you see how much the slope is significant. So if you do ACL, this will fail. So the best is to do open, a closed wedge extension osteotomy. Okay, other cases of deformity and osteoarthrosis. If you see such patient, you see, okay, this is advanced osteoarthrosis and we need to do total knee. But the reality is not. You see here that the osteoarthrosis is not advanced. It's early to moderate. So the problem is the deformity. So, Let's do our plan and you see how much the mechanical axis deviation. We measure the angles and if you see on the right side, it's about 100, the LDFA and the mechanical uh, MBTA is 80. So she has combined deformity and even the joint compressions was 4 degrees. So we have triple deformity, joint, distal, femur and proximal TV. While on the other side, the joint conversions accepted, the MLDFA is 90 and the proximal uh, uh, tibial angle is 79. So if she has a tibial deformity on the left and triple deformity on the right side. So in such situation, I plan to do correct uh, double osteotomy, taking in consideration, and you see here, uh, this is the plan, but I decrease that wedge because of taking in consideration the, the joint convergence angle. So this is uh, my plan, and this is uh, also, I plan the incision, not only the operation. So this is the proximal tibia incision, and this is the lateral um, distal femoral osteotomy incision. This is post-op, and this is the alignment. Okay, other indication. You face some situation in clinic that you have done a meniscectomy for a patient and still complaining of pain, or sometimes the presence of chondral lesion, and there are expanded indication after chondral or meniscal transplant. This is one of my patients presented to me uh, two years after meniscectomy complaining of pain on the medial side. This is a long film and you show how it's a virus deformity mild and then I did scope. There is retail of the remnant meniscus and chondral lesion. So this is either indication for osteotomy. And even if he has no chondral lesion, still osteotomy is indicated in cases of chronic pain after meniscectomy. So what about the result here? All literature about the oral techniques and it may, uh, you can see that uh, up to 20% has good results in 62, 66% uh, of patients. And uh, uh, is Cochrane, uh, there is silver evidence by Cochrane database that 70% um, benefit from osteotomy at 10 years. This is using the oral, but by tom tomofix, and well, let's show you some tomofix studies so that we have to look in different way to osteotomy treatment of osteoarthrosis. Here among the center study, the score, the Oxford knee score was the highest compared to total knee and unicondylar when your indication is proper. And this is at a three years follow-up. It was 41 uh, score. So it's, uh, show, it shows the good result of osteotomy. Here, other tomophic studies show that 91% can engage in sport activity, uh, including the mountain skiing and mountain biking. Another study that showed that 68% return to predispose sports. And here, Professor Takuyoshi from Japan did a lot of work on this field. And now he's doing uh, osteotomy using Tomofix and a lot of 
early forward peering, he's doing simultaneous uh, bilateral, and he uh, uh, does some uh, or cases of uh, uh, spank, spontaneous osteum necrosis. Now, this is another uh, uh, study done in Hanover on 1,000 cases. Of these, was about 100 using space and plate, and 800 using plate fixator, Tomofix. And you see that using space and plate, about 6% implant failure. While in the 800 case, no any case of implant failure and no loss of correction. The other minor uh, complication in a rate not, not exceeding 2-3%. So all these Tomofix studies show uh, that these uh, demonstrate that favorable results after Tomofix and the, the results are better than reported in the literature in the past and the results were comparable with uni and total mean and it should be viewed different in the present time and future. What about the technique? Importance of biplanar because this gives increased stability and rapid healing and not about the first plane, this is your target but if you need larger correction you make it up because this is not soft bone and the hinge accept more degrees of correction but never, never go uh, close to the joint because they, this carry risk of uh, fracture and not going down the tuberculum because this will be obstructed by the uh, fibula so the correction would be limited. Okay, this is the second plane and we make it vertical and try to make it long and we'll, I'll show you in, in the workshop why to do that because we, uh, this biplane or cut act as a pattern this prevents posterior translation of the tibia and uh, prevent internal rotation of the tibia and also uh, uh, improve to control slope. Slow. Here another case of the, this is for Professor Lobenhofer, how to make the second planar uh, cut down, not up, and this in cases of uh, uh, Matilda and Fira. Now, this is uh, after you doing the both cut, you have to put the spreader. When to put the spreader, we'll dis discuss that uh, in the workshop. But if you uh, see, there is a major problem of slope changes using this type of uh, place. And you have to take uh, consideration to the technique. So uh, if you put the tension up here, the spreader, you will cause like that. You increase the slope, but you, if you put it here you will preserve the scope, especially if you do uh, MCL release, complete MCL release. Um, the MCL, if you don't do, do you remember that? If you shift the mechanical axis, you will shift the load. But here, if you don't do, if you shift the mechanical axis and you don't do complete release of MCL, you will increase the load on the medial side, so the patient will have pain. So you have to completely release the MCL in the procedure. So after doing these cuts, in some cases like I showed in the, in the uh, football player when I needed to increase the slope, you have to break the hinge and if you break it, you need another functioning hinge so you can put a K wire on the anterior uh, planar cut and I'll show you in the workshop. After that you check the alignment, should be checked in full extension, then after that you put the plate and you uh, do compression of the hinge. This is very important, gives stability by a temporary life screw. Okay, and, uh, and using uh, this technique and these concepts, uh, even if you open more than 16 millimeter, you didn't uh, need a polygraph, and this is documented in the literature. Now we are doing more minimal invasive technique, doing um, high tibia by a very small incision about for centimeter. Thank you very much. This is a book for professor uh, uh, for a group uh, where Professor Leberhofer is the main editor, and I advise everyone need to do this assistant to read this book. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll open.